sisters are just living in Seattle, you know. Seattle is a very interesting city. Um, whereas before the tech boom, you could say that the city of Seattle, Seattle was, um, it was a very, very, very multicultural, thriving city with the um, black people there having created a lot of the culture. Yeah. But after the tech boom, I mean, I used to, this is funny. When I was, when I was in high school, I used to date one of the daughters of the Nordstrom family. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. In Seattle, there was like this place called Bellevue Square. Mercer Island, that's where all the rich folks lived across the a, bri a floating bridge. I, and I used to meet so many women out there. But um, yeah, I was there in Seattle when there was only one Starbucks when they first started. First one. I was there. <laughs> I was. I, I lived there. And I love it was Seattle. right in downtown. It was right. It was right. It was right in downtown. We had this store called the Bon Marche. We had this store called Nordstrom's. We had a little square in downtown Seattle. There was a McDonald's. There was like, and there was only one Starbucks. Only one. That's where they first started. Love it. Uh, do you get to visit your your family and sisters often? Or yeah, not as often as I would like. It's a it's a big drive. Well, I mean, I can I can do it. This it's is no the... problem. Um, but um, Seattle's just depressing to me now. It's very depressing. It's very cold. Very, it's definitely cold. Well, I mean, no, it's just very <laughs> depressing. Because it's not the city it was. Before, ah. it wasn't conservative. It was one of the most liberal cities in America. It's like, it's like, to, it rivaled San Francisco. Seattle yeah. rivaled San Francisco. And I, and I would even go as far to, I think somebody told me it was the most interracial city in America. That's great. As far as interracial couples. Yeah. Seattle was number one at one time. You, and not anymore, you think? No, not <laughs> yeah. at all. Not at all. Um, all of us. I mean, the neighbor, the house I I, I, be, I grew up in, the neighborhoods I grew up in, all of the neighborhoods that used to be black and mixed with everybody, we've all been pushed out of all of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not even, they don't even exist anymore. It's really not even the same place. The high school that I went to, the high school that Jimi Hendrix went to, and I think even Bruce Lee went there, called Garfield High School. It used to be 98% black and black in black black Samoan um, Filipino and a few Latinos but it was it was mostly black was it a rough uh, high school or like a, a decent high school a public high school I'm guessing yeah yeah it's a public it a high one? school but it was right in the center of uh, of Seattle yeah last time I went back that high school is completely white oh man we used to be rivaled like no other no other high school in the whole city wanted to Wanted to wanted wanted to play basketball against us. Yeah, we were, we were so rival. Everybody was scared of us. Now they've gentrified that whole neighborhood, and nobody in the neighborhood yeah. is us. And the high school is mostly isn't even us. A lot it's of tech, horrible. A lot of tech it's people horrible. now. Yeah, horrible, damn. Horrible, horrible. But you like the high school? Oh yes, I love Garfield High School. I if feel you like you were there. Chance, Google it. Google Google Garfield High School <laughs> and um see. In Seattle, Washington, and yeah. watch all the cool shit that comes now, up. Now, I'm curious, because you have such an amazing big personality. Were you, like, always a big personality? Were you ever a shy kid, or just straight to straight to confident, and was something in between? It was my grandmother. My grandmother used to sing at this place. There, was a, there used to be a pizza shop in Seattle called Pizza and Pipes. Pizza and Pipes. Yeah, they had a big pipe organ. And the big pipe organ was, um, was, um, you know, you know, you know, the big pipe organ was in the middle and bubbles used to come out of the pipe organ. Oh, that's cool. My grandmother used to go there, her and her jazz band used to sing there a lot. So I would always, so at every one of her gigs, she would have me at a table. I'd have a big pizza and I'd be sitting there all night drinking pizza and this, and these drinks called um Shirley Temples and Roy Rogers. <laughs> you know, Shirley Toasty. Temples and Roy Rogers were like um they were like alcoholic drinks but they were without alcohol with seven up and um stuff in them. So I would sit there all night and drink those drinks and eat the pizza 
while she sang and did jazz. Yeah. So I, uh, so you know. You sing as well, or a little, yes, or I sing, just love I sing. rap, I do poetry. I'm a published author. Hey, how are you doing? Are you doing an interview? Yes, for a magazine in Australia. So you know, hey, it's cool. Okay, <laughs> All right, good to see y'all. You chilling today? Just doing your thing. All right, peace, y'all. That's super cool. Um, so you're starting to sing. Yeah, you're having so fun. So, so your my, grandma, so my, your grandma was like a big personality. Me. She yeah. made me do it. Nice. I didn't want to. I could have been a a, a messed up little kid, but she made me. Good Hold grandma. on one second. You can follow me if you oh, want. Oh yeah, man, I will. I didn't want to pick up these two pieces because I got these cool kids coming to my Got the cool kids. What's, What's up? up? How you doing? You having a good day, y'all? Well, the wind is starting to slow down. The wind has been horrible, blowing my stuff all day, but I've been all right. I've been all right. What's up with you, Spider-Man? You been all right? You save anybody today? Do any crime fighting? All right. That was what I'm talking about, little man. Uh, you been playing soccer today? That's cool. Yeah, I do all this art. You like the giraffe. That's my favorite animal, the giraffe. Ooh, oh, giraffe. that's my spirit animal. Me too. Yes. You know why the giraffe is, is, is you know why the giraffe is my spirit animal? Because you're tall. <laughs> because the giraffe teaches us to always stand tall and never be afraid to stick your neck out. Uh, I love sticking my neck out for other people and I love standing tall. Wow. That's why I love the giraffe. Yeah. Yay. This one here. This is for y'all. Because y'all are the cool kids. So I keep a whole jar full of candy. I keep a jar full of candy for y'all. What do you guys say? You're welcome, my cool kids. So yeah, I'm trying to fix up all the art. It looks a little crazy right now, but normally it looks so good. Normally you could come over here and just check out everything and you won't have to worry about nothing. But right now it's looking a little crazy, but I got some bungee cords. I'm almost, almost done. We getting there. What's a look? Oh, Michael Jackson is in the middle of the road. Hold on. What's up with this whole lot right here? Why don't the people use it? That's uh, a good question. Um, the people who own it, I don't know what they're doing. I always thought they should have like a little flea market. Like, so you know, like, it's just sitting there. Nobody, it's an empty space. Well, you have to understand, a lot of property owners in San Francisco are straight tyrants. Right. Yeah. I do understand. They have a bunch of houses here now. That could be used for a home for the people who are homeless, but they would rather either keep them empty or use them for Airbnb for for, for tourists. Right. While they would while they would let the whole population of people live on the street outside the window and look at them, they would look at them like, oh well, oh well. But why? Like, what's the, what are they doing right now with this empty lot? They're not making any money on it. Exactly, I th I say that every day. I say that every day. And it looks like it should be for parking, at least. I say that. I know. That's what I'm saying. That was the setup. They could make so much money just, right. just, just if they. I know people in the neighborhood who are like, who are like, who are like. Look, we would pay monthly parking here yeah. just so our cars didn't get broke into. Yeah. The, the woman won't even do that. Or like vendors like you, they could all just you could. The people would make. Oh money. yeah. Yeah. Right, uh, right, right. It's like there are some people who want San Francisco to fail because if San Francisco fails, somehow they, the, the value of the houses they do own go up and the value of what they have goes up. So they would rather, they would rather make sure that it does, that it doesn't, it doesn't do anything yeah. because they're making money off of the dysfunction of the city right now. Damn. 
I've been studying this a lot. It's it's crazy. I believe it's it. It's crazy. I believe it. I got it's another crazy. another question for the book. What uh, what's the hardest lesson you've learned out here on the streets? What's the hardest lesson I've learned on the street? Yeah, ev and everywhere, like not just hate Ashbury, but let well, me say it pretty... like this. This is my hardest lesson. Everything and everyone is not always a blessing. And everything and everybody will keep you guessing. But you got to make sure you're not stressing. So I never ever stress. I must confess. Not everybody who says no really means no. And not everybody who says yes is trying to give you something that you really need. And a lot of people, they really don't read. And though people smile at you, they don't want you to succeed. This you got to believe, but what you conceive, you can't achieve. But you're going to have to roll up your sleeves. You're going to have to get dirty. You're going to have to stay up late and get up real early. You're going to have to take your time and you're going to have to use your mind. And some people you're going to have to ignore because they refuse to see that we are at war. On some people, they're going to turn a blind eye and even act shy. Other people are going to see you, and instead of saying hi, they're going to go behind your back and lie. That's all right. I'm going to do it a cappella. This is freestyle off the head, fella. I don't even know what I'm going to say next, but I'm trying to say rhymes in context. Let me see. What else have I learned? That some people, they want to see you get burned. And other people, they don't want to see anybody like you illuminating unapologetically. Why? Because it makes them insecure. Because they're so dirty, they hate to see things that are pure. But one thing I learned is that as long as you stay connected, you will endure. You will continue to grow. And the universe will allow you to go where you're supposed to go. Just stay in the flow and just let yourself you know, know that you're doing the right thing. Listen to your intuition and keep your glow. Don't ever dim your light and always be ready to keep up the fight. And that's all you need. And do it at a very slow speed. Don't go too fast because you don't want to just boom and crash. You want to really last. And the dumbest question is the one never asked. Ask yourself the question. Hmm, what did I learn today? What was the lesson? And once you do that, then every day you'll grow and that's a fact. Look at me and look at where I'm at. People love me because I'm a real cool cat. Out here on the corner making it warmer. Uh, hot like a sauna. Some people, in order to create, they got to use alcohol and marijuana. That's because they didn't burn their third eye out. I don't need none of that. Look what my third eye's about. I do it very articulately. And that's what I learned the most, Tony B. B. Wow. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Wow. Tony B. That was incredible, man. Woo. How often do you get to rap? I rhyme every day out here. Every people, day. people, people. I'm one of the number one freestylers on the West Coast, at least. Yeah. Because of my style. I come from an old school style of hip hop. Dude. A lot of cats killing now, it. they rhyme. They rhyme all these bars and metaphors and you can't understand them. And they're saying a lot of things fancily, but they're really saying nothing. I understand. And they're and they're rapping for other rappers to try to impress them There's that's why they're rhyming but i learned from krs1 he taught me how to mc now being an mc means mostly conscious yes mostly conscious tony be conscious major communication that's what mc stands for i want to be able to speak to you just like i am like we're having a conversation but make it rhyme on an occasion. So you understand what I'm saying, what I'm saying. 
and you understand that I'm not playing, but I can still get across what I'm portraying without delaying. And I ain't got to use a bunch of words that you've never heard, a bunch of metaphors from outer space. I can say exactly what I want to say, and it still rhymes, but I'm right here in your face. Yes. Now that's real hip hop. That's how it starts. It don't start with the mouth. It starts with the heart. And once you get that part, then you start really creating real art. And that's what I do. Damn. <laughs> I'm just a reflection of you. Thank Damn. you for coming through. Damn. Staying true. Dude, I'm going to stop the video and start <laughs> a new one because that was epic. <laughs>